Are you ready for number three? Well, I'm back and I'm here with number three. I'm talking about five things that every Christian teenager should know. Now we talked about making Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. We talked about choosing your friends wisely. And now I wanna to talk to you about what you allow to influence your life. What do you allow in to your eyes and your ears, which end up where? In your heart. And teenagers, sometimes teenagers get so concerned with what other people are doing, they get so concerned about what other people are saying. Look, I, mean, I don't know about you, but I, it's a challenge enough to make sure that I'm on track, that, I, that what's in my heart is the right thing and what's coming out of my heart is the right thing. So I, that's, that's where the real battle is. That's where your focus should be. What's going on in the inside of your heart? And a lot of that has to do with what you allow in. You know, Proverbs chapter three, verse three says this, listen, it says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. And it says, bind them around your neck. In other words, remind yourself of these things all the time. Sometimes you get those BFF necklaces. They had them in the past where one best friend would have a part of the heart for the girl and then the other best friend, would the other girl would have a, the other part of the heart and they'd wear it around their neck. Why would they do that? Why would they have a neck? To remind them of their what? Of their best friend. Oh, that's so sweet, right? Well, the Bible says to never let love and faithfulness leave you, to bind them around your neck. And then it says this. It says, and write them on the tablet of your heart. Now the Bible talks about how that you write on the tablet of your heart and what you allow other people to say and what you allow into your heart is what gets written on the tablet of your heart. You know, you could probably remember back, I can, of certain things that someone has said to me that maybe it really hurt. Maybe it was one of those things that someone said that really cut to me. And guess what? That's written on the tablet of my heart and you gotta deal with that. Or maybe how about this? I also know of something positive that someone said to me. And guess what? That's written where? On the tablet of my heart. When I went to SMU, when I was in my, doing my college work, man, I was having a challenging time. And there's one professor that spent a lot of extra time with me and helped me out. And I'll never forget, because one time she looked at me, she said, Aaron, you're capable of doing this. Aaron, you're smart enough to do this. You can do this. And you know what, for some reason, that just really encouraged me. And for some reason that got written on the tablet of my heart. And man, from that point on, I was a different type of student. So it's so important about what you allow in because what you allow in is what comes out. We put it this way, the old saying says, garbage in, garbage what? Out. The Bible says out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we know what you believe, we know what you say, we know what, you, what you're thinking of by what comes out of your mouth. But a lot of that has to do with what you allow into your heart. Jesus put it this way, listen to this in Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. He said, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be filled, will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, then your whole body will be full of darkness. See, you let light or darkness into your life, into your heart. As we've been doing this, the Lord's been reminding me, and I didn't realize these things and these exact principles, but the Lord reminded me again. I told you last time about how when I recommitted my life to Christ, when I got all in for the Lord on October 27th, 1990, on that Saturday morning at that youth retreat that I prayed the prayer. As that guest speaker was going on and talking about other things and praying for other people, the Lord began to deal with me about a couple of things. And right off the bat, I talked about this last time, the Lord dealt with me about changing my friends. Well, just a few seconds after I got done with that, the Lord said, and you need to go home and change your music. Well, man, music to me was powerful. And I loved to listen to music. I would sit in my room and listen to music. Now, back then we had listened to cassette tapes. Had a few CDs that was just coming in. But I would have, I had all these cassette tapes. I had this rack full of cassette tapes. I had this rack that was starting to be full of CDs. I had posters in my room of certain bands. And man, I would, I loved to do that. That was, to me, that was relaxing. And so for the Lord to challenge me on that, man, that was a big challenge. And I kind of waffled at first. And I said, oh Lord, you know, that's my music. You know how much I love my music. And he said, well, I thought you were serious. I said, I am serious. Okay, I'll go home and do it. And as a matter of fact, I shared last time, that as soon as I got home from the youth retreat, 
my best friend who lives a couple doors down came over. That's what I was doing when he came over. I was getting rid of my music. I was tearing apart my cassette tapes. I was cutting the CDs. I was cutting the posters up and it kind of upset him. Aaron, what are you doing? Well, I'll tell you what, man, this, these things are bad influence and I'm gonna change what I listen to because I'm living for the Lord. Well, he wanted them, but I told him this. I said, look, I'm not giving them to you. I said, you know, if it's not good enough for me, it's not good enough for you. If it hurts me, guess what? It's gonna hurt you as well. So he said, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I was putting him in a trash bag. He said, well, I'll wait till you throw the trash bag out and I'll dig through it. So you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna make sure that there's not much that you can get. I mean, I'm telling you, it was a big point in my life because I went from letting all that stuff in. And let me, let me also say this. I didn't realize at the time, I didn't sit there and analyze the words that I was listening to or analyze all that stuff. I was just listening to it because I thought it was cool. But listen, going back and looking at those words, oh my gosh, the words were filled with perversion. The words were filled with depression. The word, no wonder I was feeling a certain way. No wonder I was living a certain way. It was, I was allowing a certain influence into my life. So I not only just stopped that, don't just stop doing something, but replace it with something better. And that's what I did. You guys are so blessed, you have no idea. Christian music is up to date nowadays. Uh, there's Christian mu movies out. There's all that kind of stuff. There wasn't that kind of stuff when I was a teenager. I had to go to the, to the bookstore, the Christian bookstore that had a little itty bitty section of Christian music because it was kind of brand new and some people didn't like it. And I had to find some Christian music that I could stomach. And I had two cassette tapes. Man, I wore those cassette tapes out. And even though the music might not have been at the level of the world that was putting out, the words were so much better. And my life was completely changed. My life was so much better because I was going to church. And then how about this? I was listening to messages outside of church. I was filling my heart with the word of God. I was writing love and faithfulness on the tablet of my heart. And then not only that, when I listened to music, it was what? It was pointing me to God, glorifying God, glorifying Him, telling me about how to be strong in Him and how to be courageous in Him. And it lined up with the Word of God. So what was going in now then changed what was what? What was coming out. That's what's so important. When you're talking about music, you're talking about movies, you're talking about series that you're watching on Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu or YouTube, whatever it is, you know, you can get caught in the YouTube vortex. Maybe that's how you found us. You're in the YouTube vortex. You're just sitting there, just you're just sitting there, just going through video after video after video, and it leads you down this path. I'm telling you, you got to be careful because you'll lead down paths that you never thought you'd go. You see things you never thought you'd see, and you hear things that you never thought you'd hear. But here's the problem: it gets written on the tablet of your heart. So that's why you want to make sure to write the right things and let the right things influence your life. So the right things come out of your life, come out of your heart, come out of your mouth. Philippians chapter four tells us whatever is praiseworthy, whatever is right, whatever is just, whatever is, you know, what? think about these things. Think about the right things. You gotta do it. And you gotta start building that into your life now. There's enough junk out there to ruin a person. But there's also enough good out there that if you'll get it into your heart and get it into your life, it'll change your life and keep you on your relationship with the Lord. Be sure and like and subscribe to our page and also make sure you turn on notifications so you can be notified whenever we put out a new video. And I'll see you next time for number four out of five on five things every Christian teenager should know.